As quite often happens when I find a sacred place, I only just put down the phone and I noticed that there was a lot of natural medicine behind me. The sun is behind me, of course, but also Salalberry. And back on the beach, uh, further south, uh, for the north Nanaimo was the great, the great divine lilac. Salalberry is good for compassion. Palm to palm as lovers fall into the blessed flame from whence the waters of the earth, and aught the earth became. Great days are these, when life was nothing, nor a mother more, than wetting hunger without cease, and man and woman every kind of darkness by the morn. So many trials in the world, though none were greater than, to bring a smile that will never flee the face of man. If we as man and woman were healthy, fundamentally, rudimentarily healthy, every major problem in the world would be solved by morning. So health, to me, is the biggest issue. And what I'd like to show in my life is that you can improve your health by taking control of your personal mythology what you are, where you are, what it means. And no matter what you think or what you believe, the more it's yours and comes from your private and unique relationship to the world. I have a funny joke about the world, word unique, I'll get back to that. The more you can honor the flame of your love, of other people, they will be blessed, you will be best blessed. When you grow, people are blessed. And there's different spheres of growth for this planet, just like there are different planets, different planes or spheres of growth to every part of our body and every part of our life. There's many different spheres within spheres to our mind, different layers, people say. And where there is pain, growth changes, just like a tree changes shape when it's challenged, and these change. And a dislocation can definitely be comprehended by the significant kinds of changes that are undergone by our bodies according to the, the insults, the poisoning to the blood of our children. I came here today wanting to think about having children, and just about almost every child I've run into today is sick and has not been taught to enjoy paying attention to their environment. There's a little girl on the bus that wouldn't even show her face even after she got off the bus. Her father, with his bag of cigarettes, <clears throat> and McDonald's food, I was going to some poor people's apartments, and she was so downcast that she ran into a bush and started crying, and her father picked her up quite lovingly, and you think, well, he certainly loves her, you'd say, but that's not actually love. She's not getting love. If you see a plant, you know when it's not getting sun and water, and you can see that in your fellow man, and I want people to see that. And the more sun and water you get, the more the more you allow your spheres of your life to interact with the spheres of nature, which are all symbiotic, because nature wants you to grow as much as it wants trees to grow. You notice what nature does to grow a tree? To grow shit? It wants you to grow too. Is it, do you think, it's not just incidental that things grow and they get what they need to grow, so do we, at every numinous level. So there's a richness to the realms, the dragon's realms that we live in. But you're never going to get that richness watching television and constraining your thought process to the different squabbles, political, religious, technological, social, that happen on the internet or playing video games 12 fucking days, 12 fucking hours a day or whatever it is. Nobody would do that. Nobody would do that if they had a healthy connection to the richness of life. Not because my imagination is right, but because it's always right to exercise the greatest possible liberty of every organ of your mind, imagination, and body. I actually shrivel whenever I hear quotes about Einstein comparing the imagination to knowledge and all this sort of stuff. Who fucking wrote all those quotes? Remember, wonder why there's so many quotes by Albert Einstein? You know, it's hardly a year goes by but I don't hear three quotes by Albert Einstein. If he even wrote them in five, have you ever noticed they don't really make any fucking sense and they might not mean what you think they mean? Imagination is not more important than knowledge. Breathing is not more important than air. Hunger is not more important than food. What the f who the fuck thought that up? And who the fuck 
Would that make sense to you? Everything's changing. Knowledge is changing. A cyclical way of life allows you to get the greatest nourishment from a knowledge that is not defined by all the genres of knowledge that are forced upon us by a cybernetic industrial society. Ways of relating and knowing. Right? And this kind of knowledge I'm talking about does not exclude science and medicine, but science and medicine excludes this. And that's not a reciprocal relationship. That shows that science and medicine is weak, and its people are weak-minded, and they're meant to be weak-minded. Inside the strength of the sociopath is an extremely weak and rotten core. Weakness. That weakness can be tended to if it's allowed to surface. But most of what it turns into is leaked aggression, delusion, manipulation, lying, acting, all of which can be done totally sincerely in the name of Jesus their entire life. People believe in satellites like they believe in Jesus. And it's truly real because you believe in it. Satellites only exist because you believe in it. And that's a wonderful codependent relationship. It's a celestial codependent relationship. God only exists because you believe in him. Buddha only exists because you believe in them. History only believe, exists because you believe in it. You animate it, so that makes it exciting. You animate the story. You fill it in. You animate the story. We do that. We animate stories. You ask yourself, why do you need to believe in Jesus or satellites? Why do they need to exist? And who would tell such extraordinary lies? And who is their enemy that such extraordinary lies need be wielded upon mankind? And it's one in a million people that will even be able to consider what I just said. So count yourself lucky and strong, if you can, I would say. Wouldn't you? I mean... I'm happy, you're happy to disagree. You're welcome to disagree. So that's that for now.